One talks about the wonders of modern science, but seldom thinks of the simple things scientists are doing. In this demonstration of practical chemistry, for example... In this video, I will be showing you how to extract eosin and some unknown compound from pink highlighters. This is everything you are going to need. Pink highlighters, isopropanol, beakers, gloves, pliers, and a heating mantle, which is not shown here. First, you need to start by removing these plastic caps off the back of these highlighters. While these ink packs are not actually toxic, it's probably best to wear gloves anyway because you're going to end up staining your fingers. Now all I have to do is get through all of these. 15 minutes later and I've gotten all of these ink cartridges out of their plastic containers. We now need to separate the ink inside from the plastic coating. Now to do this we are going to run isopropanol through the container. Because we're using so many highlighters, we're going to have to use a large amount of isopropanol to remove all of it. So I'm going to start by extracting it directly into a pot that we will later boil. Now this is where you can see that I'm having a little bit of a problem with this extraction. There's this white kind of crap that's floating around inside of this container and I'm not quite sure what it is. But whatever it is, it's not the dye I want to extract. So I'm going to go ahead and do a room temperature gravity filtration on this and try to collect as much of it as I can. I didn't plan on doing a gravity filtration, so I kind of spilled because this isn't the best pouring apparatus. <laughs> so it's a very good thing that whatever I'm working with is relatively non-toxic. Now we've moved outside because we have isopropanol that we need to boil off. So I put it on this electric hot plate. I'm going to set the lid jar and just let it go for a few hours. While we're boiling off our solvent outside, we're going to return to our filters and see if we can't get this gunk off of it and try to identify what it is. Now we can see that this stuff is white or a very light pink and I went ahead and washed it a few times with water and isopropyl alcohol and it never seemed to dissolve. So I'm not sure what we're dealing with but I went ahead and put it in a sample vial anyway just to save. If you guys have any tests that you want me to run on this, let me know and I will try it out and keep you guys posted. We're going to head back outside and get our solution off the hot plate. And I've realized that we still have too much solvent and it's going to almost burn on the hot plate. So, I need a method to drive off the rest of the water on this compound. Rather than using a direct heat source, we're going to use some sort of sieve to pull moisture out of the air. I'm going to try magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt. You can get it at any pharmacy. We're going to start by taking a lot of magnesium sulfate and spreading it out at the bottom of a baking tray, putting it in the oven for around 250 degrees, and then slowly bringing this temperature up for about two hours until we get around 450 degrees. If you do this too quickly, it ends up melting together and making a giant lump, which is a pain in the butt to take out of the bottom of a glass baking tray. The next step is to load this into some airtight container. You can use plastic bags. In my case, I use Tupperware. And remember, it's going to be really hot coming out of the oven, so you want to be sure not to put it directly onto plastic or it'll melt. Unfortunately, this method didn't really seem to pull out much water at all. Um, I was left with a syrupy, almost like molasses kind of mixture, and that's about what it went in as, was just a syrupy molasses. I left it in for about five days, and I didn't really notice a lot of change. So this is what we're left with after 18 highlighters and a bottle of isopropanol. This weird, insoluble stuff and this nice blood red dye. 
I ended up having to add a little bit of water to get it to actually go into the dram vial because it was sticking to the sides of the container so much it wouldn't come out. I tried using a more powerful desiccate like calcium chloride to take away the rest of the water, but I left it in there for a day or so, no water level really changed, so I ended up just calling the project as is. In all, I think I spent about two weeks on this video and I was ready to finish it. You know, all in all, I really did like this experiment. It threw me just enough curveballs for me to be able to get frustrated and think of a way to fix them, but not too many to where it just became tedious. So if you want to leave your comment down below, I would love to hear from you, and I think we all get to learn a little bit more when we interact. So until next time, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.